Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha, and welcome back to this video on our series for automated options trading. For those of you who are just joining us, just as a reminder, I'm going through the process right now of building out a test portfolio for pure expected value trade ideas. So the last video, we kind of looked at the stats on where we were. Somebody brought this up in the community, and I really appreciate it. A lot of people had brought up in the community post for the last one that some of the trade ideas that were getting filtered and entered and some of the bots that they were testing kind of like right alongside of me were getting positions that were really, really small premium, sometimes a dollar or $2 a premium. And we certainly don't want to be picking up pennies in front of a steamroller as the old saying goes. So I want to look at our positions here with you together, kind of go through this process together, and then if needed, make any adjustments to our scanner that we're running to avoid these lower premium positions. Okay, so I'm looking here inside of my position tab and specifically the closed positions here. And then I'm filtering for my pure EV portfolio. Now this is, again, just helpful when you build out these separate paper trading portfolios. I kind of like to organize them like this. You could do it like this if you want to, you could do it a different way. But this just helps me filter all the testing that I'm doing across different things to just this pure EV portfolio that we've been kind of following along with here. So I can see all of those. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna look at closed and expired positions, nothing that was canceled. So forget all the canceled orders where it was trying to enter a position, but it never did. Don't wanna do any of those. So now I've got my list of closed and expired positions, positions that just expired and were profitable or positions that closed, et cetera. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to the premium column and I'm gonna sort the premium column. And yep, I see it right here, right now. This is a good catch actually. Someone had a good catch in the community on this one. I appreciate it very much. But I can see here that some of the positions and actually a number of the positions that just flat out expired. So we never actually got a chance to close them. I would bet 100% we tried to close them through exit options. And, um, and they were just far out of the money and expired and were profitable for these trades. But look at the premiums that this thing has right here for some of these positions. And so here's the deal on this. We started this experiment. I didn't even think about this until somebody brought it up, but we started this experiment saying, look, pure expected value and then rank by alpha. So like risk adjusted expected value over max loss. What are the best trades that we could you know, get into and then go ahead bought like, you know, you get into that position based on our criteria. And so I didn't really expect that sometimes the pot would get into these positions that, and notice that we're actually holding these positions, the DIT, which is days in trade, the days in trade on these positions is very, very short. So what it's doing essentially, let's just look at this top one here, is it's selling premium, collecting literally a dollar, which I don't even know how sometimes you'd actually get filled on some of these. So this is kind of also now like kind of starting to filter out like, okay, what's the real likelihood you get filled on some of these? Maybe you do, maybe you get a couple bucks or not. Probably nobody else is trading these anyway. But you can see here, this one got filled at 9.45 in the morning on July 13th for a dollar. It expired the next day. It was really far out on either end, so it's fine, but it's just taking in too much risk for only collecting a dollar. This is that classic saying of picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Is probably what is happening. Now it's factored into all the stats that we've shown in the last video. We'll do another video when we get some more trading data on the, all this stuff. But you can see that it's um, it's probably not the best use case for what we're doing. We need to make some adjustments to our bot, to our scanner, to avoid any positions that would be low premium positions like this. So just to recap some of these again, you can see if I just like scroll down here, a lot of these were pretty narrow spreads. So you can see these were probably 50 cent wide spreads um, in many cases or a dollar wide spreads. This one was 50 cents wide. Here's another 50 cent wide, 50 cent wide, 50 cent wide spread. So the risk here is not too bad, but you're still only collecting a couple dollars per contract. It's probably not the best use of your capital. Now, if you do a lot of contracts, some people will say, well, just do more contracts if it's a really good trade. But then you got all that huge risk of assignment and exercise, especially closer to expiration. And then you still wanna carry all that. I mean, you have one contract that's now leveraged to 100 shares. If you start doing 40, 50 contracts, I mean, you've got 40, 50,000 shares that you could potentially be dealt with. That's not, you know, that's not nothing to, you know, turn your hat at. So um, if I go down further, you can see that there was probably a lot here that were in the seven, I mean, clearly a lot were in the seven range. Most of these, and just kind of looking visually on the left-hand side as you go down here too, look at the ones that generally have have captured this lower premium. 
And most of these down the left-hand side, you can see visually because we color-coded them, the blue being, being the ETFs and the orange being the, the regular stock positions. Most of these ones that had the low premium were in ETFs. That kind of makes sense that you'd have generally lower premium in ETFs compared to stocks. The so stocks are going to have generally more premium. They're a little bit more volatile than ETFs. But, uh, but I thought it was pretty fascinating. Although you did capture one of these, like this is Tesla. This is a huge stock. Uh, very high price security. Tesla right now is trading at 223. A huge high price security. And you basically tried to get into this trade. You got in this trade for eight bucks and you had $490 of capital at risk. Now, it wasn't a long trade. I mean, you were literally in it for a day, but at the same time, that's probably not the best use of what we want to do. So this is why we do testing anyway, by the way. Like this is some of the stuff that you just you wouldn't know. I didn't think about this. Like it didn't cross my mind to just do like a minimum filter on premium. I kind of figured that it would take higher premium ones that might have been better for alpha. Um, so I didn't know that that was going to happen. So you also see here that because the premium was so low, it was trying to take some profits and it just took quite a long time to get the trade filled, um, trying to take profits at 80%, which is where we set it at the beginning. Uh, so it was just kind of churning out a lot of working orders, which is fine, but eventually it, uh, it was able to close the position. So I think what we're going to do though, is I think I'm going to introduce a pretty low level filter for this and try to make sure that we're adjusting this um, to, to compensate for this. Now, I don't know if there's a particularly perfect way to do it, but I see that most of these are probably 50 cent wide spreads. So if we get a 50 cent wide spread, we probably want to get some higher premium in there. Uh, so we could probably do a low level adjustment, maybe 15 cents or maybe 10 cents, something in there. You be the judge of your own. Um, but I'm going to make a, a slight adjustment and tweak to the bots. Um, and see if we can't get some uh, just some better quality trades coming through the system. So I'm just going to go over to one of the bots that we have running. This is TLT. It doesn't really matter because they're all sharing the same scanner. So, and this is actually the beauty of doing this. So once you have a scanner that is being used across all the bots that you have, and in this case mine is, it's shared among the different bots that are kind of using this one. As soon as I make a single change to this, then that change is reflected in all the bots. So I don't have to go you know, to the 40, however many bots we have running for this test, I don't have to go and make a change to everything. I can just come in here to trade ideas, to the trade ideas action. I'm gonna go down here to the position criteria. And then right here is where I want to go ahead and make a change. Now, again, you can put whatever numbers you want in here. I think that we'll probably start, you know, somewhere around like 12 cents as like a minimum somewhere in there. If you get 80% of that, then it gets you some room to actually get the position off and get some good premium if you do these small scalpy little trades, which if it does it, it does it. If that's the best trade, I'll, I'll let it do it. I'm not judging right now. I'm just trying to like use the math and data. Um, and then I'll set the premium here to just something really high just so we have a range. It's probably never going to get to that level, but uh, it just gives us an upper boundary so that it actually can filter out these trades. So once I go in here, I'll just go ahead and save. I'll save that here. That is now adjusted across every single bot that is running this. So again, it doesn't matter what bot I go to. If I open up whatever this one is, DocuSign, you can see that new position criteria is in here for us moving forward. So I think generally it's gonna be a good idea. Um, I think it's pretty interesting to see how this has broadly played out that some of these, uh, it's choosing some of these lower premium ones and trying to capture some of these. Um, and in some cases it's working out. Um, not all the cases, but some cases it's working out where the bots are doing okay with some of these positions. Um, and in some cases like SLV where it's done a lot of these lower premium trades, like look at all these lower premium trades that it's captured, really hasn't worked out. So um, this case with SLV, it's done seven positions, which is not statistically significant at all, but you can see that it's not doing well. And if you just like kind of dig into some of these positions, you'll probably see why it's not doing well because most of the trades that it's taken on are low premium trades. So we're gonna to try to force it to take on some higher premium trades through the use of this filter for the mid price, making sure that mid price is high enough and, and see if that changes the performance. In the case of SLV, maybe we'll come back and look at this one later, but it might mean that it doesn't trade as often because the premium isn't there. That's okay, I don't care. I'm just testing at this point to see kind of what works for different strategies and for our particular accounts. So as always, hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you wanna follow along on the series, of course, please make sure you subscribe. And until next time, happy trading.